Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Do We Know Them, episode 71. We are officially back and on track, fingers crossed. Who knows? I wasn't sure we'd make it to this. I wasn't sure either, but we are back with our like regular schedule, Mondays, Fridays, and hopefully we could stick to that. And um, yeah, any updates, Lily, in your life? Nope. <laughs> Pretty much everything hit the sideline for the last few weeks. My mom was like, oh, her friend wanted to, she has like kitchen stuff that she wanted to give me. I'm like, oh, thanks, sure, I'll take it. And she's like, she still wants to come see your new place and come like explore, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, let me clean and figure out my life because it's kind of been on hold. <laughs> yeah, it's been, it's been crazy, but there's been a lot of stuff that has gone down when we like, took a break or whatever you want to call it. And oh my God, I've been like seeing a lot of it play out on TikTok. We've been getting tagged in so many things. And now we're going to finally talk about them because um, the internet, it waits for nobody. You can take a break, but the internet will say, not. It doesn't stop. <laughs> it does not. So we have three topics we're going to cover today. Which one do you want to do first? <sighs> We have Fousey Tube. Yeah, I was like, what are the three again? Uh, we have Tana Mojo and Bryce Hall's fight. And then we have, it's just Ashley basically posing as Taylor oh. Swift in public and trying to get attention from it. But it's just, well, I can't do the spoiler. I can't do the spoiler. I was going to say uh, what can the we end start is. with that one? Okay. Oh, sure. That was a twist. I didn't see that coming. Sure. One thing that I did want to cover, but I also feel like there's not much to cover yet because no one really knows what's going on is the Scooter Braun thing because all of his clients have left. As they should. Agreed. But it's weird that they all went at the exact same time. They did, yeah, because the whole Taylor Swift Scooter Braun thing, like, I feel like that happened long enough ago that anybody that was going to leave probably would have left already if that was the reason. Yeah, that leaving. can't be the reason they're No, leaving. but maybe it's, I just thought about it, maybe it's a contractual thing. So maybe they can't leave because they were under contract. But everyone wouldn't have had the same, like, end dates to contracts, so. Hmm. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. But so we'll cover that as soon as more comes out. Until then, um, let's look at the uh, knockoff Taylor Swift. Yeah, we can't cover Taylor Swift and Scooter Braun yet. So we'll cover the other one. It's just Ashley. If you guys don't remember, um, it's just Ashley. Is that her username or is that what she calls herself? So that's the funny part is, do you, don't you remember I looked it up and like that isn't even her username? Right. So, oh, it's because of that time that that fan was meeting her on the street. And they were like, it's because that's what they verbally have to say to calm yeah, people she, down. And she's like, it's just Ashley. And she just became known as, it's just, that's kind of funny actually. Anyway, if you guys don't remember, we covered her in conjunction with the other lookalikes on TikTok, like specifically the Ariana Grande one is very creepy and has been like called oh, out by Ariana. Yeah. Oh my God, the OnlyFans thing, I forgot about that. But even Ariana Grande has been like, mm, maybe not, thank you. Taylor Swift has never like publicly commented on Ashley, but many, many, many people have on her behalf, basically saying like, hey, there's like lookalikes and doing like fun little things. And then there's whatever it is you're doing, girly, because this is just a bit much. Yeah, basically, if you missed that episode, I would suggest you go watch it. I thought it was like, <laughs> but um, our main takeaway with lookalikes is we don't think there's a problem to look like them or to even not really look like them and then just make like go out of your way to make yourself look like them and not for like a one-off little sketch or like video you're doing but like to have your entire identity wrapped around looking like them when you're doing that on purpose I don't even know if I'm explaining it well but like well it feels like you're like profiting off of someone else's likeness and that's where it becomes a little bit like weird because there's things you could do online to overstep boundaries but when you start going out into public as someone which has happened several times with these people that is far beyond a boundary because then people who who think that you're that person, anything you do reflects on them. And I just think that's wild. One thing that wasn't even like a dark or nefarious, like side effect from it, but it was just kind of like, that's sad and sucks, was um, the TikToker Jax had seen It's Just Ashley reacting, or she like had a, a TikTok with her song in it. And she then like sent it to her mom, sent it to her management, like thinks Taylor Swift had made a TikTok with her song in oh it. Oh my God, I missed, it wasn't. I did not So it was just that. like, you just got her hopes up. So like, you just thought her dream had come true and then it didn't. Yeah, I think there's a lot of issues with it. And I mean, we're not the only ones. People, you know, they're on her ass, like daily being like, what the fuck? Like, can you can you quit it? The reason why we're talking about her today is because I was scrolling on TikTok as I do, and I saw this TikTok. I have not seen it, so. Ashley, as in the Taylor Swift impersonator, is at my mall right now walking around with security guards. And everyone keeps freaking security out. Security guards? It's Taylor, and I'm like, guys, come on now, come on now, come on now. Oh my god. <laughs> Back to what I was just saying is that like there's a difference between 
just naturally being like a doppelganger for someone and then going out of your way to look like this person. We have already noted in our past episodes, <laughs> Ashley does not actually look like Taylor Swift. If she didn't like dress like her or do her makeup like her or do her hair like her, she would not even remotely be mistaken for Taylor Swift. Yeah, no. So that's why this is disturbing because she does not need security guards if she was dressed as herself. So what's your first guess on what is going on? Because <laughs> I actually want to get your first impression before we reveal what happened here. I mean, I think it's what it, exactly what we think is going on, that she's doing it for attention. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, here's the thing. So it's kind of strange because after this video went viral, the one we just watched, people started going to Ashley's social medias and they saw that before this happened, she posted several Instagram stories that alluded to her doing something like this. Oh my God. She has an entire fucking crew. Correct. So the first one is her with a group of people and it says, this is gonna be fun and she's in a car and she's dressed as Taylor or she has her red lipstick on and wing liner that's pretty much it and then she says coolest public social experiment ever let's have some fun oh my god and then she posted she's done with her microphone um on and it says mic is on whatever so she alluded to the fact that this was a social experiment what's important to note is that she does address it so we'll get into her addressing it but before we do that you have to know <laughs> it's gonna explode yeah well it's about to get it's about to really explode because she did not oh only go to a mall okay bitch went to disneyland dressed she as taylor swift with security guards to Disneyland, which is arguably the most place you would ever get recognized. I'm so annoyed at this. She's also wearing giant sunglasses, yes. a hat, and mm -hmm. has her hair forward. So there's so little of her face actually showing. Oh my God. So security guards are automatically gonna draw attention and be like, who's that? This has to be for an outlet. Someone paid her to do this, right? Well, so we'll get into her addressing it because she mentions who's behind this. The fact that she's been around for a while now and hasn't done this herself, like someone had her, like they were like, where's the Taylor Swift look alike? Let's do a social experiment. And then they paid her to do it. Correct. And if you guessed that it was like some weird YouTube prank channel, you'd be correct. <laughs> See, I was even leaning towards more like who was gonna have her go to the Grammys? Oh my what God, what called? was their name? Um, Sweetie High. Sweetie. I wasn't even gonna say it was like them. I was gonna say this is giving when Clever, the company I used to work for, did a series called Diss Track. I was so against it from the beginning, but they did like a Taylor Swift versus Katy Perry thing and they had lookalikes come that. sing and like made up a, it was so stupid. But that's what this was giving. Um, so I just wanted to kind of just touch briefly on that. Um, I'm not really going to dive deep into it because honestly, you can't win on social media. Um, but I do want to preface this by just saying that if you're one of the people in my comments like saying you don't deserve to live or you should be sued and all that stuff, like it, it doesn't bother me up here. Like I'm mentally stable. I am a mom. I have two kids. I have a husband. I'm solid. I've been on social media for a while, so I've gotten a lot of hate. Um, however, everyone knows what happened yesterday was a prank. It was, I collaborated with a YouTuber. He's really great. His name is Vic in the Game. You can go follow him. He does this all the time. Um, and pretty much, the, so one of the rumors was that I hired bodyguards and just walked around with them. Um, no, all that behind the scenes stuff was with him. I didn't hire them. I collaborated with Vic. And totally so, different then. Um, pretty much the social experiment was to live a day in the life of a celebrity, to see what would happen if I went out looking like Taylor Swift. And so from all the videos that you guys have seen, like you do um, every day. fans swarm, you know? This really goes to show how far a fandom will go. You don't even need to look like a celebrity. I mean, there are tons of um, celebrities out there that have hired decoys, just put a wig on, sunglasses, you know, and, and you're done. You think, you know, the closer um, fans are to the decoy, the further away they are from the actual celebrity. It's a very positive experience. Um, I feel like a lot of everyone online huh. is kind of divided what? right now. I've gotten a ton of positive comments and I've gotten some negative uh, feedback. Um, I just feel like in this fandom alone, it's, it's divided. And we all know that, you know, there's like a clear line drawn. Um, and a lot of you don't understand this, and I'm not going to explain it in detail, but there's a difference between a Taylor Swift fan. You can love her music. You can love her as a person. You can look up to her. And then there's Swifties. They are completely two different groups. What are you getting at, lady? <laughs> a group. 
I, I don't fit in with groups. Um, they're very cliquish. Growing up, I was never a part of a group. I was always the outcast. And so trying- I'm sorry, ma'am. Let me stop you there because I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> Literally what I- where is she going? I, I just wanted to hear about the part at the mall. And again, Disneyland. So there's a few things here. What do we need a person who looks like another person to show us what a paparazzi video could show us? Which is that celebrities get swarmed and literally have no privacy. Has anyone ever doubted that Taylor Swift has any privacy or could go to a mall? What was she hoping for everyone to do? Like provide some insightful thing nobody's ever seen before or heard before? Like you're just pretending to be someone walking through a mall. If everyone thinks you're Taylor Swift, they're gonna like try to take a picture with you? Like what? what is the bombshell Taylor here? Swift used to literally get inside, allegedly, get inside a suitcase to leave oh, her apartment. That. Why do we need Ashley Leachin to show us what would happen in a mall? And also why, who, this guy, Vic? Vic, Vic in, the, in the game. Vic in the game. Oh my God, that makes me feel a little better because I thought she said he was big in the game, like describing what how he is in the youth. I'm like, I've never heard of him and I don't think that makes it any it's better. It's not big, he's just in it. So something she does say in her video and then now looking at Vic in the game's channel is something that he apparently does a lot is he doesn't just do it with her. He's done it with many other people. So he did a fake Bad Bunny prank where he gets someone who looks like Bad Bunny and a fake Peso Pluma prank. I don't know who that is. Fake weekend prank. Oh my God. Wait, 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 wait. But in the description of that Bad Bunny one, it gets cut off, but it says, if you, you're you ever injured in an accident, you can check out Morgan. Oh, what, is this it, sponsored by a lawyer? Is accident that referring protection? to one of the things that he puts on as an accident? Like, if you get hurt during a prank like this? No, maybe he's sponsored by like an injury lawyer. I'm dying. What is it? <laughs> yeah, it is an injury lawyer. Literally, it's like, you can check out Morgan and Morgan. Their fee is free unless you win. But I think he's doing that because like people probably do get injured in this kind of thing. Wow. Okay. So explain to me why you would do this with multiple people and it somehow isn't just you wanting people to freak out so you can film it. Like what is the purpose of doing this repetitively? Like what is the commentary here, the social experiment? Exactly. I was going to say, it's not providing any new commentary. It's the exact same thing over and over again. <laughs> yeah. It's like when people are like literally harassing people or doing horrible things. They're like, it's just a prank, bro. It's just like, I'm literally just doing social experiment. Exactly, yeah. First of all, just let alone the like safety issue of it all where, I mean, do we not remember Logan Paul at Playlist when he got like almost stampeded? You know, like just having a group of people like that when it's not planned and you're just like being mobbed in an open space, like... That's dangerous. And I just really dislike things like this because this is almost even worse than pranks in general because pranks, at least you're a part of it. This is like really not even a part of. It's just like, oh, you look like this person. Let's just film you getting like harassed and like mobbed in public. Like, okay, I guess. Yeah. Cre very creative. No, so he's done Bad Bunny. Oh, David Dobrik. Oh God, he was the person that was first in line at David Dobrik's pizza. Oh God, okay. Yeah, why is like <laughs> a lot of his content is I was first in line. I didn't know that was a thing being first. Surviving on only Mr. Beast chocolate for 24 hours? So you mean you fasted for 24 hours, but you had some chocolate? <laughs> I was like, I'm pretty sure I've done that before. <laughs> I mean, listen, we are just looking at his page and judging from that. So we could be completely wrong. Any Vic in the in the game, you know, fans, let us know. Please feel free to elaborate and, and enlighten us on this. But it does seem like he's not maybe providing the most, you know, substantial, social, important topics. Like he's not just, he's not bringing any like insightful social commentary. It seems from what we're seeing right here. No, it feels clickbaity. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. If you, it's very like old school, like pranks without being like offensive. There doesn't seem to be anything like outright offensive or horrible. But still also going back to the personal uh, injury lawyer, you can't do these kind of things, not because it's like just you're being rude to the artist, which I mean, I'm sure that they probably aren't thrilled with people doing this. It's also like you're, that's creating a dangerous scenario that people are gonna get hurt for no reason. Not that if the celebrity was actually there, there would be a good reason, but like this is, oh my God. And I just realized this is so random. All the videos are so short. Eight minutes, nine minutes. Can you click on one? Like, is it literally just like them in the mall, no preface, and then it just ends? <laughs> This just feels mean because these are people that are like losing their shit thinking that their like dream just came true. And then it's like, oh, never mind. What's Alexis. up, bro? What's up? How, How you doing? doing? How you feeling? Excited. I'm happy. Yeah. Not even. Yeah. Wait, 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 wait. He even talks like Bad Bunny. <laughs> 
what the hell? That's crazy, actually. Listen, I think that if it didn't put anyone in danger and didn't possibly overstep personal boundaries that celebrities should still have because they're human beings, then I would be like, oh, whatever. This guy doesn't seem like a really bad guy or anything like that. But I think also it's just like from looking at his channel, his followers, like he has 212,000 subscribers. He's getting 700,000 views on these videos. So 3.4 million uh, two months and ago. And imagine what Ashley's is gonna do in numbers when hers comes out because of all this drama that came out. So I don't know. I think it's weird. I think that people are rightfully calling her out because for her, on top of this being what this guy does. Like, it's not like this uh, channel that like dives deep into thoughts and like wants to know what's behind this and that. It's like, let's just go to the mall and like freak some people out and think that you're Taylor Swift. 100%. She she makes it seem like it's going to be this like really in-depth, thoughtful social commentary. And that's not at all what this no, is. No, I think that she's, it's just so weird that she would agree to this. I don't- Is it? I don't know. I, but even for her, I feel like this is something that part of her has to deeply want to get that experience to do that. Like, cause I would be mortified to do something like that. But like, I think she really enjoys it. Like being recognized as Taylor Swift. I mean, clearly that's her <laughs> entire brand. I'm just like, after all the shit you got for the Grammys thing, I feel like she would be like, mm, maybe time to reevaluate things and like step away because of, she got so much hate from that. And I'll say right now, like even she references people telling her to kill herself. I don't think there's ever a reason you should be doing that. Absolutely not. She also got shit. I don't know if you saw, we were getting tagged in it back then when it happened, but it wasn't like a big enough story to like cover when she went to Taylor Swift's concert and she was like filming herself. And like, I think she got VIP too or something. And like everyone was freaking out that she was at the concert. Even if I was the biggest Taylor Swift fan in the world, I was just like, I have to see her. Either if I were her, I would go in disguise so that I didn't look like her, like extra in disguise. Or just go like you normally Or look. just not go. I would not go. After everything that happened before the Taylor Swift concert, I would not go and show my face there because the sheer like niche of people that will know who you are there, it would just like, I'll be like, no thanks. Uh, I'm not gonna subject myself to that. Uh, yeah, oh my God, yeah. I just can't. This but is... that's uh, basically the latest update. We'll let you know if when it comes out, there's anything different than we suspect, which is just video of her getting mobbed. Our next location, City Walk. This is the pathway to go into Universal Studios. So there's gonna be a lot of people that probably know about Taylor Swift. So. Let's see. Let's test it out. Let's make it the best prank on YouTube, eh? Let's go! Yeah. Yeah. Come on! Get a picture! Got a picture with her! They always ask her for a picture, but never how she's feeling. Just one picture! No, no, just one! No, one picture! No, no, no. Hey, hey. no, no, no. What if Ashley or Taylor just needs someone to talk to? I personally deal with anxiety myself. That's why I partnered with BetterHelp. Oh my <laughs> God. Yeah, baby. We're literally getting escorted. Let's go. If, like, we did this in New York City. Should we run it back? Part two. Part two? Part two. Same part two. two. <laughs> 100K likes. New York City and we'll run it back part two. I also found it just insane that she didn't just go to the mall. She went to fucking Disneyland, which is like, I'm talking, even if you have like two followers online, someone's gonna recognize you. Like Disneyland is like where everyone gets recognized, especially just the sunglasses, the hat. I just can't, I can't, I can't. Well, and the security guards, like, I, as I said, like that automatically is gonna be, have people draw their attention to you and go, ooh, who's that person? And then when you literally are doing everything you can to look like a celebrity and that she tries to excuse it with that it's not it wasn't her yeah idea. she always comes and addresses these types of things in the weirdest most almost like she's like annoyed. it's very dismissive yeah it's almost like yeah. she's just like you guys are like totally not getting it and it's like girl why the fuck would we get it i'm just like what aren't we getting I, i'm missing that part. yeah so that was just a weird little update on our on our friend it's just ashley and we can move on now but uh yeah good good times good times with our friend. interesting okay cool um not cool but let's yeah something that's definitely not Fousey, cool. Next. Yeah, I was gonna say, do you want to just sandwich Fousey in the middle? Because there are some parts of this that are funny because in a weird way, I think Fousey can be funny sometimes. I genuinely do think he can be. And there are moments where things are funny or things he says are funny. But then there's the flip side of it, which is that this is a person that is struggling greatly with their mental health. And as someone who has witnessed people in my life who, whom I love very much have breakdowns and kind of like splits in reality, it's very difficult to watch it be broadcasted and like laughed at because I don't think it's funny. 
funny that he's going through what he's going through. I think also what's hard with him specifically is that you can tell a lot of the times he's doing it for attention. Like he's doing it so more people watch and it doesn't feel like necessarily like he's just lost his mind. It's like, no, he's doing that on purpose because he doesn't really care if people think he lost his mind. So he's fine. But how would people know that? But that's the thing. I was like, it used to be, I feel like easier to differentiate. Like if he's just yelling and even some of the stuff he did in Vegas, I think he was just doing for attention. But now it's getting to the point where you can't really tell what's for attention and what's real. And it's just alarming. Yeah, I don't think a lot of it or as much of it, I should say, is as fake as we think. I think that there's a lot more that is real and that he actually is feeling. Like when he's screaming at people, I don't think he's faking that. I think there's moments where he'll fake a fight and I'll show you examples of that. But the majority of the time that he's screaming at assistants or screaming at people in his life, he's being for real. Like that is my opinion. I think he's absolutely being for real. So this escalated and we said it would because the last time that we covered him, we kind of left off on he needs to put the camera down. This streaming 24 seven is extremely dangerous. And especially someone with his history, like this can go really wrong. And then you mentioned his Las Vegas kind of just downfall where he was just screaming at fucking everybody. And it only really did get worse from there because he did did keep streaming 24 seven. Do you know what that means? 24 seven, every minute of his life. This also then produced a whole new issue that has now become like the main issue is since he's streaming 24 seven, people know where he, like they find out where he is and where he's going. So like I saw a clip recently where he's in a restaurant and the waiter comes up to him and they're like, sir, like we're getting bomb threats. And he's being like, they're not doing it for you. They're doing it for me, blah, blah. And I'm like, mm -hmm. Maybe <laughs> that doesn't matter. And the restaurant's still getting bomb threats and they don't know who you are and they don't know how to handle this. And then he blows up at the restaurant staff. He's like, fuck you, I'm not paying for my food. And he leaves. And it's like, why are you mad at them? You're the one live streaming and having all these. So, cause now it's not just fans watching him or people that are enjoying his live stream. It's people going in and purposely trying to like fuck it up or like derail what he's doing. You getting bomb threats? You want us to leave? I can't turn it. I'm not doing anything. I could leave. Somebody, this is what happened. Somebody drove by and saw him, yelled at him, and he put him over. So I'll leave. It's okay. You seem like you're going to cry. I don't want to hurt your feelings. And that's not what it is. And I don't want to. I'm more concerned about the people. Nobody's doing a bomb threat, man. Wake up. Nobody's doing a bomb threat. It's a 13 year old at home trying to scare you. Don't cry. Somebody called in a bomb threat in 2018 and made me lose millions of dollars. They're doing this to fuck with me, not you guys. I don't want the food, by the way, and I'm not paying for it. It just came out. No, no, no. Fuck this restaurant. So they'll call in bomb threats. They'll do things to the places he's at because it's easy to figure out where he is. Well, and also just the sheer volume of people watching him. I think he like set records on kick. I think there was at exactly. one point like 87,000 concurrent viewers. Like it's just this insane influx of people. And it's made him present himself as like, I'm the number one streamer in the world. And he like has these accolades he thinks makes it okay. And it's like, Nope. Honestly, that, that I think doesn't... the um, ultimate downfall and what kind of, because there's a few elements to this that led to the ending of his story that were is like the latest update, which is that he was arrested and people are speculating was sent to a mental health facility like Baker acted, but nobody is sure. I was just going to say, so as of this moment, we don't know he's been silent, right? Yeah, he got arrested and then that was it. What I think led to that is he started hanging around really toxic streamers like Aiden Ross, Sneeko, all that group of people whom are not the best people to be around when you are going through a mental health crisis because half of them don't even fucking believe in depression or anxiety. So it's literally like this weird crowd that he was surrounding himself with that simultaneously both loved the attention because they fucking love it. That's the only reason why they were even hanging out with him is because- It's not like they were previously friends. No, absolutely not. They started hanging out after all this shit. And if they were friends before, I guarantee you they weren't friends like they might have known of each other or something i mean not to mention isn't like fusi is like my age 
And they're young. I think Sneeko is like maybe 21, maybe. Is he that young? He's 24. Oh, okay. So he is, yeah, he's young. Aiden Ross is only 22. And Fusi is 33. And not to say that you can't hang out with people that are a little younger than you. Like Jocelyn is older than me and we were friends and it wasn't a problem. But like basically the only reason he even has access to these other streamers is because they want the attention that he's getting. Right. And so because every second of his life is documented, there are multiple moments that aren't necessarily in chronological order. They're just like moments that happen. Some are funny. Again, obviously the end is not funny at all. One thing that I didn't put a link to, but that Fusi did a lot. And he even, I think, did it like throughout his whole live streaming career is that like he pretends to be gay. Have you seen that shtick? Everyone calls it zesty. It's just the three of us. Excuse me. May I get a Diet Coke, please? Yeah. And light on the ice. Like I have veneers and I don't want them to break because I like to bite. Thank you. Like, Watch how you get respect at any place you go. Watch this. This is how you get respect and good service anywhere you go. Hey, uh, what's your name? Your name is what? Louis, um, I have a problem. I have, um, what's it called when you can't be cold because your bl blood level goes too low? I'm anemic. And I just tried showering in your establishment and the water's cold only. The Kelly Cartel. I'm from Guadalajara. And I was trying to buy some cocaina to supply to my bitches back home. And I won't mess with any of the ops and I won't overcharge you or anything. But I just need to sell out of your airport. But how much is those? Whatever you want. Yeah. And I really, that fucking pisses me off. Like actually a lot. But now that you say that, that is exactly, isn't Aiden Ross did that for Oh, I'm sure he forever. did. And that was like, why, I mean, I think he still does it. That was one of his like shticks that made him popular. I literally don't get it. What the fuck is so funny about being gay? And I'm not even trying to be like hypersensitive or like I can't handle, but like what is funny about that? About being a feminist? What they think is funny is them making other people uncomfortable by pretending they're gay. Why would it make people uncomfortable to be gay around Because them? he comes on to them like very strongly does and he that he's i like, haven't even seen that i've seen him literally like i don't know asking, about fusi but that's like what aiden ross used to do oh no because what i've seen fusi do it it's literally just him being like where's the bathroom or like asking regular questions he just is being extremely effeminate like for what oh. i don't understand the joke i guess is what i'm saying is the punchline gay is funny like i know everybody's gonna call me out for being like hypersensitive but like i think that's annoying and weird but anyway there's other things other than that that were just weird occurrences so there were multiple times where he would fight with inanimate objects and i don't even know what to make of this to be honest it's just life. something interesting don't be uh the side character in your own life how's it going you're fucking lucky I'm being nice today. You're fucking lucky. I have to admit, I would be lying if I said I didn't think that was a little funny. Did you think that was a little bit funny or not really? Not really my sense of humor, but sure. I understand why people would think it's funny. Yeah, like things like that, I don't see them as like, he's doing super well and is very stable, but it's also like knowing Fousey and like his humor over the years, I could see how this moment was him trying to be funny. It doesn't feel, and it could be, and obviously all of this has to do with each other. So I'm sure it is part of like him kind of having that mental break a little bit, but this is kind of the more harmless stuff that started happening all the time. I saw on TikTok, he was like fighting with clothes in a store and like, literally like going to like punch it and like box the clothes you know so things like that that were like oh it's just fussy being fussy there were where is the fucking oh i have it on my phone the one where he lost his tooth <laughs> Oh, I did see this. I did feel really bad for him in this clip because, I mean, I guess he does have money now, so I don't know if that's his big concern, but like I have had a root canal on one of my front teeth, so it has like a cap on it. I don't think it's technically it's a called crown. veneer, but um, yeah. So if that fell off, randomly, like I've had it for years now, I would be mortified because it's not something that's like, you can just pop right back in. I feel like I've told this story on the podcast, but I'm just not sure anymore. Uh, this tooth like here is a uh, fake tooth because I had a root canal and it fell off when I was eating a fucking Werther's original. Of course, Werther's. <laughs> It'll get you every time. But like, yeah, I've had it glued back in one time. And yeah, you do like, it isn't like, <laughs> it comes out and you have a little nub. Yes, we've told it because you were saying that you saw, we've told 
felt this. We've 100% said, said this. You guys, I'll tell it again if, if you missed it the last time. I was in high school and I got this root canal, but I didn't really know what a root canal was. And apparently they shave away the majority of your tooth Almost to then it. put the crown on. Again, didn't know that. So halfway through the procedure, it had taken a while and the dentist goes, okay, do you want to like take a break, go to the bathroom? And I'm like, yeah, sure. I go to the bathroom and discover that I only have a nub left. And again, this isn't my back tooth. This is my, like, right next to my two front teeth. That one. <laughs> I'm forever scarred because it was just like, Oh my God, what is that? That what? Fusi is well known. He has veneers and he's been very open about that. He said he got like botched veneers that like a month later were all yellowed and like very like cheap and whatever. So he had to get them redone. And these are his redone veneers. And when I saw this clip, I was like, gasp, I could not. It's just his reaction. It's not that, it, like, it happening is actually, like, gives me anxiety. But his reaction's great. I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> his face. <laughs> the processing. <laughs> Karma just got me. I'm way too cocky right now. Oh, no. So he has a smaller tooth, not as his much of a nub. His isn't even as nub-like as mine was. <laughs> yeah, the root canal nubs are way smaller than that. He has like a cap almost on top. Oh my God. See, that was such a mix of like, I felt bad and then I was like, oh, he's not that mad. Okay, so it's funny. I think it's funny because just the, the act of a tooth falling out, I think that's funny in general. Like, I don't know, just the way and then him, him like processing it for so long. But what's interesting is there's a little bit of like, a reality there when when he says that thing of like karma is getting me because I'm getting too cocky. He's just been screaming at everyone around him for everything. And like that seemed to be a moment where it was like clicking for him of like, I need to chill the fuck out. What am I doing? You know, it didn't stop him because after we have multiple videos where he you know that it's after this because he doesn't have his tooth in. You know, he just continues on, but he almost has like this moment of clarity. And then he's just like, mm. this other video is him at a restaurant, which is similar. So you said he got kicked out of a restaurant because they were getting bomb threats. Well, look at what he does to places that he goes to. Sex, I've jacked off. I haven't done anything. I'm gonna blow up. Mm. Bitch, I'm about to blow up. That's a J. Cole song. It's a J. Cole song. Allahu Akbar! Like, that's not funny. That's not something that should be joked about. I laughed at his response afterwards. He says it's the J. Cole song because he, like, clearly got a, yeah, I know, from someone who's like, okay, good. Like, we're okay. But it's, why is he screaming? He definitely has completely lost sight of, like, any sort of what's right, what's wrong. He's just kind of living for this moment as, like, the creator. And, like, he just wants to, like, what's gonna get me content? What's gonna get me views? And riding that high so hard that obviously he crashed as hard as he did. So we don't even need to watch it, but multiple times he just like wanted to fight people. Not actually, like, um, what's his name? Jack Daugherty? He Dougherty. Dougherty. It's very, it's just the way it's spelled. It's, my brain turns to mush. But... I'm like, now who's pronouncing things wrong? <laughs> you can't pronounce the white last name. <laughs> He's apparently a TikToker. I've heard his name for sure. And he does like pranks and stuff like that. And Fusi like full on goes to this man's house. Not a man. He's like, very young, but he goes to this kid's house and proceeds to like fight with him and like tell him that all his pranks are fake and confronts him and starts screaming in that guy's house. And that brings me back to like, I think I'll, even these people that are collabing with him don't know when he's kidding. Oh, 100% so it's like they when don't. he starts to get aggressive, they think he's kidding. And then all of a sudden it gets to a point they're like, maybe he's not. Okay, like a perfect example of that. I love that you brought that up is that this video is one with Sneeko in the car when they're riding together. My gloves! My gloves! Did we really forget my gloves? Uh, no, your glove is uh, a. No, there was two gloves. I only seen one. One the real one. I one forgot the one. left one. I'm about to. I'm about to punch myself. Sneeko, hold my hands. Well, I'm about to punch myself. Sneeko, I hit myself. Please. I swear to God, I hit my. Dog! I beg you. So you can even tell.
bother. Sneeko is like not even entertaining. He's just annoyed. Well, half the time, Sneeko literally ignores everything that Fusi's doing. This is another instance where he kind of like opens up to Sneeko and says that he has like mental health issues. And Sneeko really could give a fuck less. Like he just does not give a shit. That's how you can tell that like they aren't doing it because they're friends or because they, it's like a good collab. Like Sneeko is literally doing it for attention. Oh, I'm comfortable with my sexuality. Stop being insecure. Stop using homophobic. Apologize. I mean, I'm calling my therapist to talk about anxiety. You've been in LA too long, man. You need to come to Miami, go to the beach more, pray more. Anxiety is real. <laughs> it's only as real as you believe it. He's still texting me. He said, ha, 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 ha. Bear, stop, please. God damn it, man. I put it back on you. Oh, yo, yo, yo. I'm yo, beginning yo. annoyed. Yo, yo, People yo. don't stop. Texting me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yo, I'm sorry for that. I'm getting really fucking. First of all, anxiety is real. What are you getting annoyed? Right? You're getting annoyed about texts on your phone? No, I asked my entire friends, team, everybody, stop texting me. You know how many random You're texts I'm punch getting? Punch your head over texts. You know how many you random know? texts I'm getting? Hey know. Yusuf, how have you been? Be talk to you in three fucking years. Suck my Think about the people whose houses just burn. Like no, in the no, no, that's such a weak You're argument. Freaking that's, such out a weak argument. that's such a weak argument. That's such a weak argument. Over text messages? That's such a weak argument. Worried about people in other countries. I hate when people no, say people that shit. people in this country, like people around here right now, like you're punching your head over text messages on your phone. No, it's not just text messages. First of all, I'm stressed out. About what? Paintball with Aiden Ross? Playing paintball. I'm not stressed out about paintball. What are you stressed out about? You know how much, you know, dog, you're a creator. You know how much shit is happening behind the scenes right now? Who got, just let it go. With the police department, with the swatting, with the doxing. Forget, like, forget it. I know, but listen, respectfully, if you're my friend, if you're actually my friend, don't text me this whole weekend, this whole week. Don't text me. I've asked you guys nicely. You also block them. No, I'm not gonna block them. And then I'll and, block them when you're ready. And those are my friends. You know how many texts I'm getting from people I haven't spoken to in years? Hey, is this still Yusuf's number? Yeah, your breath smells. It smells like Neon's breath. I find that clip extremely disturbing because again, I think this is like an insight into his like mental health decline. And it's just, it's troubling to watch a vulnerable moment like that where hundreds of thousands and now even more people are seeing because everyone's trying to figure out what the fuck is going on. And people like Sneeko, first of all, so many people in the comments of this particular TikTok were like, oh my God, like Sneeko's actually like spitting facts. Like Sneeko is a better therapist than Fusi's therapist. I mean, actually that might actually be true, but that's just, yeah. because, that's just because Susie's really bad. Someone actually commented what you just said. When I watch Fusi, I don't even know what is real and drama. Yeah, you can't tell if he's just doing it to get a reaction out of someone. But I think that anybody with like half a fucking ounce of emotional intelligence could have understood that it wasn't about the text messages. He is going through a severe amount of stress. Something like, bro, my therapist used to, well, I don't have a therapist anymore. I probably should, but I don't have a therapist anymore. But my old one used to tell me, people walk around with a certain volume on life and yours is turned way, way up. You're, you're not experiencing the same things other people experience. You're seeing it and feeling it on a level that other people don't. If you're hearing something and it's like a low hum, you're like, oh, chill, whatever. If it's blaring in your fucking ear, you're gonna feel some type of way about it. He is experiencing that on a different level, I believe, because of like his current like mental state. It's completely something I've probably never even experienced. So I can't imagine because I have experienced Honestly, anxiety. Honestly, I feel like I've experienced such a fraction of it, but like to watch him do, like him getting mad at people texting him, it's because one, he's live 24 seven. So it's a distraction. And I can think of like when my back was like doing the worst it possibly could and I'm like trying to focus on something and then like my phone keeps going off. I don't have the amount of like, you're trying to fucking do something with literal like no capacity to be able to do that. It feels almost silly in the moment too. Cause you're like, how can I not like for me, it'll be like, how can I not cook dinner or do something so set? Like, I'm just yeah. like, you just need to like put the clothes from the washer to the dryer. Why do I literally want to scream at the top of my lungs right now? Like it just feels exactly. insane. And in Fusi's case, he's also surrounded by a bunch of fucking idiots like Sneeko and Aiden Ross and people who don't get it. Like I'm lucky to have people around me that fucking get it. Who does Fusi have? It's like terribly sad. I know because he pushes everyone away and that's the whole thing. It's like, I have had moments where it's like the littlest thing. Like when you're operating on zero, 
zero, like your tank is on empty. You're just trying to like do the bare minimum and you can't because you're so distracted by anything. The smallest thing will set you off. His is that times a million. So it's like, on one hand, I'm like, Fuck, like I get when things are like too much for you to handle, but the reason they're too much for him to handle is because he's put himself in this situation where millions of people are watching his every move and he thinks that that's what he has to keep doing and it's not, <laughs> first of all. And two, he's letting something like a text message of someone saying like people from months ago or from years ago in your life are reaching out because they're concerned because of your behavior. Either they are concerned or they are like, clout chasing people from his past. Regardless, like it may just feel like too much for him, but then to see Sneeko next to him and just be like, people actually have to work. Bro, do you understand how this works? Like how, like obviously not, but like that is such an annoying take. And the, the fact that there's people are like, yeah, like why is he being so dramatic? He's struggling. Do I need to write it on a neon sign for you guys to be able to see it? Like, it's just, he's struggling mentally. Hello? Like literally there's a comment that says, bro need to chill. Like, come on now, bro. He needs to not be streaming 24 seven and hanging out with fucking Sneeko. It's like, uh, what is that? I've seen a quote or something like, bro, why are you anxious? Just like stop being, you know, like just don't do that. Like just don't be that way. It just, it doesn't make any fucking sense. And then people are quoting freaking Sneeko saying about what? Paintball with Aiden Ross? No guys, that's not like you and Sneeko are equally as dense to not understand that this is far deeper than that. And what we're about to watch now is absolute proof of that in case everyone's like, no, he just wants attention. No, this is a mental health crisis that we're watching unfold and I hope at the very least that it could educate at least one person into understanding that yes there's certain like sensationalized behavior that people do for views and then there's this like we knew that this was gonna happen from the last time we covered him. We were like, this is gonna be bad if he doesn't stop. For a while, he talked about his kick deal. So because he streams, I, I'm not sure if it's exclusively on kick. I think he also does Twitch, but he does stream on kick a lot. That's where he's live 24 seven. So kick offered him a deal that was rumored to be $15 million. And it was like the most money that kick had ever offered anyone. And he became very cocky about it, started bragging about it. Well, because he's live 24 seven, we also got to see when he lost lost that kick deal. Which I said in the beginning, I'm like, I get the kick, like the people who own kick and work there and are giving out these deals, they are just doing it because they know he is bringing in views. But I just kept thinking like, why going into business with someone that is this unpredictable and like just about to blow up at any time, you would think would be a liability or something. And it clearly eventually did become a problem enough that they canceled it. So all you motherfuckers. Yo. I mean, what do they want us to do? They want some action? They want some action or what? Action only thing. Say wallah. Are they really? Really? Oh, that's nuts. My heart, my heart just dropped. I'm driving home. You can see his soul just leave his body. Well, it's been rumored, and I think Aiden Ross is the reason that this has been rumored, that he got another kick deal and that they're gonna do something else for more money. I don't know if after everything we're gonna discuss that has any validity to it because this got really bad. And the reason it got really bad is because he's streaming 24 seven and people are able to like you said, know his every move to play with him in these ways because there are people sick enough to do that. But basically what happened is that there's this other streamer. I am not gonna say his name because I strongly believe people like him just like little fucking snakes in this world just thrive off of having people talk about them. And I don't think he honestly deserves to have his name spoken about or anything, but I do wanna show him because he is very disturbing to me, but he is basically the reason all this happened. I told you all I was gonna do this shit. Within 48 hours, look. Let me explain. I'm known for trolling other people. You know, Ice Poseidon, Aaron Carter in his fucking short stint when he was online. I've taken a break. I do lifestyle vlogs. The fact he even just brought up Aaron Carter. I know. When he's passed away is yeah, fucked. Fu like no. he has, well, you could, you're gonna see very soon. This guy has literally no moral compass at all. Where I fucking feed raccoons and shit. But I was a little bored and wanted to test out some troll shit on kick because I saw all these fucking idiots that I despise on the same platform that I had been streaming on. I'd been streaming on kick since it had come out. 
And yesterday I literally said I'm going to make Fousey cry because he's irritating as fuck, keeps popping up on my fucking TikTok and all this shit, and I think that the guy is obnoxious. I think that he's full of shit. I think everything about him is fake. Fake teeth, fake chain, fake girls, fake fucking kick deal, fake everything. And I love doing this shit. So he wanted to troll Fousey, and his reasoning is so, like, the fact that people like this exist are, is really troubling, but like he just wanted to mess with him. This part I'm really foggy about because there's so many videos online that I couldn't pinpoint how he got to speak to Fousey, but he got Fousey's number, okay? And they spoke on the phone on Fousey's stream and also on this guy's stream. So it was like the weirdest crossover ever. I wanna watch this first video on top and you can see how they were interacting on stream because it's so fucking weird. It's very troubling. Can you hear me, buddy? Hello? Hello? Can you hear me, buddy? You know, we have your address. Oh, yeah, really? Number. Oh, you like doxing too. Hey, I know where you are right now and I live here, buddy. You think you're going to make it the rest of the night? I swear to God, you pull up to my house right now. You think? A knife, 10, uh, 10 feet in your fucking throat. Really? I literally fucking slice it down to your penis and chop it off. Yes, this is a goddamn bitch. Really? Oh, you're baby. threatening me? I swear to God, you pull up to my house right now. Okay. <laughs> hey, where do you want to meet? Throat. I'll literally fucking slice it down to your penis and chop it off. <laughs> I'll kill you if you come up to me. Basically, they spoke. They both threatened each other. This guy very much was oh, trying to like me. haunt Fusi and make him feel like people were after him and that he was after him and that he knew where he was. And it absolutely, considering Fusi's mental state that he's been in lately, you can imagine what happened. It started escalating. He got really visibly scared. And then Aiden Ross tried to call Fusi to calm him down, I guess. Aiden's calling me. Aiden, I'm gonna die tonight. I manifested it. No, you, right do you not see what happened? Please listen to me. Everything I'm about to say, just please listen. You have a fucking beautiful fan base. You have a beautiful family. You have kids. Everyone looks up to you. And I'm about to die. Stop, stop. Let me talk. I'm late. Talk. Do not blow this, bro. Do not. This is it, bro. This is the breaking point. This is what everyone wants to see. Right now, we, we, we gotta get some help, bro. I, I, bro, Fuzi, I'm here. Like, I'll drive to you right now, bro. Please, let's just, you gotta go to sleep. Please, bro, please. Alright, Aiden, I'll go to sleep right now. Alright, alright, alright. Fousey, please. He's gonna call me to tell me to go to sleep when a guy just threatened me and he's been telling his my mom is gonna kill me. That's what they care about, their money. You hear the sirens? They're here. That's what they care about? Did they, did they ask me, am I safe? Am I good? Am I in danger? Go get some sleep. Money never sleeps. So obviously that's super disturbing. Aiden Ross, all things considered, he was trying to help Fousey. And from what it sounds like, from what he said, Fousey had been awake for two days. That is a common manic symptom, right? When you're extremely manic, you don't you don't sleep. And then you get progressively more delusional at some points. And it could get really dangerous because as human beings, we need to sleep. And that high sometimes just feels so high you cannot fucking sleep. People compare like not sleeping for multiple days is the same as being like severely intoxicated. Like, oh yeah, I believe you it. do start hallucinating. You don't think straight and it's just, uh, I don't like any of it. It's heartbreaking because Aiden Ross with all his faults is trying to help him, you know? And he is saying like, please like look at all the good things you have and just get rest. Like this is a breaking point. And him saying like, this is what everyone wants to see that really hurt because it's true. That's why everyone's there. They're watching a person deteriorate, you know? It's a and train it's really... wreck that they can't look away from. Exactly. But then, and I'm not sure if this happened before or after Aiden's call. I believe that he actually might've called the cops before Aiden's call, but he did call the cops and it's pretty difficult to watch. Where are you, sir? I'm in the inter- <laughs> Continental! No, give me the phone, man. Give me the phone. You gotta calm down. Bro. No, dog! Sit down and calm down. Relax. I'm gonna go. Oh, because a guy told me I'm gonna die tonight. You want me to relax? Yo, sit down and let me give her the address. And send the cops. Send the cops. There's a gun to my head right now. There's a gun to my head. Help, ma'am, ma'am, ma'am. Ma'am, he left. Ma'am, he left. There's a gun to my head. Help, help. Get them. Help, I. Ma'am, Intercontinental was my room number. Help, tell me. I literally told him, if I see you, I'm sticking a knife nine inches in your neck and I'm sliding it down your penis. He gave me his address. And how does he know where you're staying at? I don't, he's a stalker. Okay, and who is this guy? I don't 
No. So how do you want us to look for him if you don't know where he is? I have his address. What is his address? I said grab my security 20 minutes ago. You guys are dumb as man. You guys are literally dumb as Oh, no. Hey, record this. Security, come in here now. They told me to stay outside. I can't come inside. Yo, for my protection, come in here. I can't come inside. They told me he can't come in. So it's horrible. It's troubling I, I honestly like it makes me feel nauseous like i just hate all of this but that's the last that anyone heard from fusi many believe he was baker acted so if you are baker acted you are kind of forcefully put in some sort of like mental health you know institution hey guys i'm really upset um because i was hoping you guys would interact with me on discord i'm here with Bassam. but you guys are being really weird so forget about it just want to say hi. I miss y'all. I'm currently under what's it called? This 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 thing the cops put me under. I have no idea. I forgot the name of the act. When you can't leave a mental hospital until you get clearance. It's not a nice act. <laughs> it's not a nice act. Um, can't leave the hospital until I get clearance from the police. So I've been here for four days now. They drug me up every day. Any time I say something wrong, wallahi, they put a needle this big into my arm. But I love y'all. I made the .4 second shot. I got fouled out. That's all it is. I'll be back. Y'all know that. Season two on the way. We champions now. Let's get it. G7, baby. By the way, yes, I know I look like shit. When I get out of here, though, eyebrows done, beard line up. I'm getting a pink diamond tooth right here for free. I'm shaving my head. It's going to be so icy. But, hey, this is going to make y'all hate Mercury more. I told him if he posts the picture, the video I sent him with the caption to Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok in the next 20 minutes, so y'all have to vouch, he gets $1,000. We giving out money out here now. I gave I gave the hospital people money. I give I'm just giving out money to give money out now. I love y'all. Let's get it. It just escalated so quickly. And the the sad part is is that he had reason to feel fear or like very uncomfortable with that person who is obviously a fucking weirdo and like should not be on the internet. Um, threatening him and making him like stalking him. That is what that guy did. Like if you got his number and you're talking to Fusi and you're saying I know where you are and you're watching his every move and you're making him scared, it's because you're a fucking stalker and you know enough information to be able to do that but also not 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 defending that asshole at all but everyone's watching his every move he's streaming it i guess the difference is also that he weaponized it in a way that other people didn't and he went like that extra mile that other people didn't most people are just watching and commenting and being assholes in comments or chat or that people are doing what i said earlier it's like calling the restaurant he's at they're not calling him and threatening it so he felt like i guess maybe a little more detached when those threats even that's were fucked in. yeah for sure but it's just like get offline it's difficult to watch someone very similar but way worse to his um july 15th episode with yeah. you know when he was screaming at keemstar and on top of the car and all that stuff that was difficult to watch. This is a million times more difficult to watch because it's a, sure. a genuine breaking of a person who after the July 15th thing, he is very open about the fact that he was like broke and he just didn't, he wasn't on the internet and he just didn't have any money and he didn't know what to do in life essentially. And this felt to him like a very real possibility to kickstart things and to make money and be able to like provide for his parents again. And that's the thing you know, I was gonna say, it breaks my heart because in the moments where it doesn't feel like he's as like out of control and he is saying that he's like he's gonna pay off his parents mortgage and like those seem like things he does really value and he wants to like take care of his family but then he just lets it all get so out of control that that isn't his like main focus anymore and he doesn't realize what he's doing is the opposite of what he's trying to do i think that's the thing is i don't think he realizes really no. on a complete like human level i don't think he's able to realize what's happening completely like in the reality of it all and how well, and that's what pisses me off that he has these like employees around him because it's not like his friends around him right now these are like his security his like i don't even know who, what the people are doing that are around him his assistant or whatever they're not there because they're like, Team Fusi, we care about your well-being. They're there because they're being paid to be there. He said that he has around like 40 to 50 employees. Like he's hinted at that number. You know, to have so many people around you but also have no one is a kind of difficult reality to face. Yeah. My like heart really breaks when I see him having a valid reason to be upset but 
also not quite to the extent that he's taking it because of the mental pressure he's under. It's like a pressure cooker, honestly, that just completely exploded. Like, it's not like he was making that up. This guy was harassing him. This guy was scaring him. This guy made him feel unsafe. But other people in that moment, because I feel, have not been there or able to be there for him properly throughout this journey. Like Aiden Ross, like you're calling now, you know, this has been obvious to fucking everybody else. You know what I mean? Like this but has it, been the obvious. The thing is, is that even the people that are calling out, they were encouraging it up until this point. I just, I feel sorry, honestly. And I know he's a grown man who put himself on the internet. I feel sorry that everyone knows this. I don't know, I feel like it's important to cover because it's not like, oh, here's the latest drama with Tube. Like it's not like that, but it's like, it is important to know Number one, like, what are we consuming as an audience? Like, the, if you got, are one of those people that was watching his live stream, I strongly urge you to reconsider it, should he ever come back onto the internet and start live streaming 24 seven. I feel like consuming that, you hold some responsibility to how bad everything has gotten. Like, I feel like as humans, we just have to hold ourselves to a higher standard and be like, I don't want to watch someone crumble and like encourage it in real time so that he can. That's the thing, because so. that is what has kept him going to like keep streaming and doing all this is because he has now this inflated ego that goes along with it and thinks that that's the key to his success is to keep streaming because that's what has given him this new chance at a career that he thought was lost forever. Yeah, but I think ultimately I always feel very uncomfortable. I mean, even with like I've seen like a few like women in the airport like breaking down and like losing it and just like running and people are so quick to like clown on people like that and just be like what the fuck is wrong with this way I personally have the complete opposite response where I'm just like oh my god I like my heart just breaks for people because it could be you if you think it couldn't be you it could be you I've been through enough to know that like you would never think and then you watch it happen to someone you love or yourself and you're like holy shit everyone is like especially people who are prone to mental illness and stuff like one step away from kind of losing connection with reality for even a moment and it's very scary and not to mention like I don't think Fousey is on drugs I think no, that this I is so. a mental thing but from experience with people that have also had mental things drugs also don't affect them the same way so it's like while one person might smoke weed and like get tired and pass out because it got them too high, that's not the same reaction that someone has where they already have a chemical imbalance in their brain and it might act have them act out more or like exacerbate the things they're already feeling. So regardless of whether he is or not, that's not the main problem here. I think it is situational and it depends on each person, but the immense amount of stress that he's been under is really like... I think that's why we're seeing what we're seeing. Like, I don't think that Fousey in any other situation, like if he was off the internet all these years, do I think that we'd he'd still be experiencing the same thing? I don't. I hope that this can be like the break in this that he needed to then realize that it's not healthy and this isn't his new career path is to be live 24 seven. No one can do that. Yeah, I don't think anyone under any circumstance could handle that kind of pressure that comes with that. And then also just like the sheer lack of privacy also just like when you're sleeping even it's on so you know that like you're sleeping and it's happening like I think that that would push anyone over the edge it's just so fucking sad that we see it in real time happening and then also that it just has to end with him getting handcuffed while he's going through a mental health crisis it's just all so fucked which is something that now everyone is going to reference just like they referenced July 15th yeah I, it's just sad I sincerely regardless of any thoughts I have of Fousey or anything he's done in the past like just it's really sad to to see a person go through this and for people to like pop their popcorn and just be like oh my god he's fucking losing it like it, it is really disheartening to see the lack of empathy that the internet has i mean we already knew that but geez it's bad but anyway i know that that was like a heavy topic i'm sorry that was just an update because we have covered fusi and we kind of said that this was gonna happen and then it did happen unfortunately but yeah we can we could go to something a little bit more lighthearted because I know I know that was a lot. I'm sorry. I don't even know if I'd say this is lighthearted, but it's just not as dark as that. So we have almost covered this, but then it just kind of never actually happened. And I'm sure a lot of you watching already are aware of it, but the saga between Tana Mojo and Bryce Hall, <laughs> where Bryce Hall has just outed himself as just such an asshole, <laughs> which I mean, Tana, Definitely not a perfect angel. And we've talked about recently how she's been fucking up. But like to everyone's knowledge on the internet that's watched them, they have come off as being at the very least like 
influencer friends. Maybe not like calling each other when they are in a really dark place and need some help, but like I definitely didn't think that it was like a fake friendship. It might have been played up for the internet, but I think that they know each other on a decent level. And Bryce has gone out of his way to, in interviews, answer questions in just the worst possible way, whether he means it or not, because he's tried to be like, I didn't mean to be so harsh, but then he literally like reiterates what he said in just a different way that's just as harsh. And also that Bryce Hall has had like kind of a redemption arc, you would say, from being just viewed as a complete douchebag, and then to see him do this, and it's like, Oh, well, that was well, fake. and <laughs> it got to this point. But what we were going to cover in an episode that I don't ever think made it onto our show was that he went on the Zach Sang show and he got asked basically if he's ever slept with someone that he wasn't attracted to, but he slept with them basically because of who they were. And he's like, oh, yeah, Tana Mojo. And it's like, excuse with me, no hesitation. Have you ever been interested in someone or hooked up with someone because of who they were and you weren't fully attracted to them? Oh, yeah. Really? Well, should I drop it? Yeah. Tana. <laughs> Back in 2019, Tana. Sorry. I had to say it. We love Tana here. I, lo I saw that you just did a thing with Tana. <laughs> so you, you, you slept with Tana just because you had the opportunity to sleep with Tana. Yeah. Golly. That sounds so douchebaggy. Let me rephrase that. Um, we were feeling each other, but I knew who she was, obviously, and I was like an up-and-coming guy. And then I did whatever was humanly possible to put myself in that scenario. <laughs> For what motive, though? What were your motives? I was like, I want to do it to say I can. I said, say I did it. Got it. Yeah. That's not nice. But she, I've been did, on the the same ex she did the exact same thing. Really? To you? Because now... To you? She, now she will s say it, huh? you know? So we, like... It was like a business transaction. Yeah, literally. No, well. With our genitalia. That is literally so fucking mean. Never come on a podcast and say that because I would be afraid of how bad that would make me look. Yeah. Like, a, like you couldn't waterboard that out of me. Uh-uh. And he just freely said it. In fact, Zach didn't even ask him to elaborate. And he goes, I should say it. <laughs> he goes, I should say it, Tana. Bryce! And never once has Bryce said this to me. So then they had their issue from that. Well, and the reason that it was an issue is because they were friends, like at least what Tana thought they were. So it wasn't even just being like, oh yeah, I slept with her for clout. It was like, maybe you don't say that about someone that you're actually friends with now Well, though. yeah, like, and I think that from the way that they describe it, they did hook up once, but then they were both like, eh, maybe not. And then they just became friends after that. So that's just a really fucking mean thing to say about someone that you're friendly with in general that you're not like even hooking up with anymore. I don't know. And also that he has defended it as being like, well, Tana talks about like that stuff all the time. People of the internet were kind of saying, Tana, you do that too. And I, that frustrates me because I like to clout farm, but like, I'm only ever going to talk about someone I hooked up with if it's public knowledge or if they talk about it first or if it's a crazy ass yeah, story. Yeah, you should hear about the ones you don't know. And they give me the go ahead. Like, I'm never going to sit down and be like, do you guys want to know the most famous person I've or could have or like that's yeah. not like that she slept with someone for clout she isn't like yeah they i i wasn't attracted to them at all and like that says more about you than it does about the oh, other 100 percent. and i think those were the two elements that you said number one you weren't attracted to her and you just slept with her because of who she was both of those things make you a dick but anyway after that she was definitely like hurt by that and then you know that all died down and you would think bryce would just stop but no he doesn't and this is like if we could take the go back in time clock tana mojo and bryce hall have beef like i feel like this is day one bff headlines what happened i i just don't like i really don't like tana <laughs> she just i i really don't i think what she do, does is fake but um she got pissed at like what i said on that zach saying podcast and it, it came out wrong but she says that she fucks people for clout all the time and i said like yeah I, I hooked up with tana for clout at the time but then we grew to be friends and then she goes on her own like podcast and just kind of like shits on me he has like a new fight and he was like tweeting i want tana to say team bryce on god to like promote it i need her to have it. i was like didn't you just say you fucked me for clout on a podcast three days ago i feel like tana like you said bryce i know she says she she fucks for clout. She said that on here, I think. She's probably mad because you guys were actually friends. So she was like hurt by it. Big shocker. I was never friends with Tana. Every single time I'm I'm in a vicinity and Tana's in the same vicinity vicinity, she'll grab her phone out and she'll film me and like hug me and grab me. And I'm just like, oh my god, this girl needs to stop like touching me. But 
that that also seems like kind of your vibe too. And I don't mean that ne- negatively here, but like you and Tana, like being like smoochy, blah, blah, blah. Like that seems like good for everybody. That's like, I could totally see her doing what you're saying, but I won't see you being like, Ooh, don't do that to me. Tana. I just personally don't do that. So like the fact that she's mad at me for saying that on a podcast, I apologize. Like, sorry if it came across as like me being a dickhead, but it, for her to go on that podcast when she does the exact same thing, if not worse, is extremely hypocritical. And he said basically that him and Tana are not friends at all. He describes it as basically any time that he would enter a room and Tana was there, she would like grab him and start filming him. And it was like uncomfortable for him. That's how he described it as like, she's making me feel uncomfortable. I didn't want to be a part of those videos. And what's interesting and what people have found because hello, this is the internet is that many, 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 many of the videos that they have up together, he's filming, he's holding the phone. So it's like, okay, yeah, I could see how like, maybe she's your influencer friend. And like, whenever you guys are together, you just like film because that's the influencer thing to do. But to paint it as like, I don't even fucking know this bitch. And she just makes me film with her is after though, after you literally just said you slept with her for clout. You know, what's really interesting is that this is kind of like juxtaposed with the last time we covered Tana, which is that she was saying she didn't know someone that she did know. And I'm just like, why are you all lying? Yeah, no, it's, know? yeah she's getting a taste of her own medicine, honestly. <laughs> literally, but a little bit more intense because everybody I would think would be like, oh yeah, Tana Amber. I mean, literally the most viral moment of Tana Mojo, like one of the most on TikTok was her saying, I'm team Bryce on God. You remember that? Yes! I'm being sorry about that. It's not my beef, but you know, we team Bryce out here. That's right. <laughs> Even team the paparazzi Bryce. team Bryce on God. She was team Bryce on God. How are you going to do this? After all this happened, she went on to Jeff's podcast, which I'm still till this day confused. Is she a co-host on it or does she just come on sometimes because she's- I think to- like how we have co- special correspondence. She's like a recurring special correspondent. Okay, got you. So basically- She was on Jeff's podcast and that's where they decided to host a FaceTime confrontation between Tana Mojo and Bryce Hall. So Bryce Hall's on FaceTime, Tana Mojo's there talking to him. Jeff is sitting on the side giving, I have to say, very annoying commentary. Like I I know it's his podcast, but like the shit that he was saying, I was getting annoyed. Like he was just like, he would just make a lot of jokes that were like, dude, they're actually having or trying to have some sort of conversation here. I um, haven't watched this whole thing, but the parts I have watched just towards the beginning, I just get so annoyed because Bryce tries to like make it like he has a real life and an internet life. And those are completely separate and nothing counts in the internet life in real life. And I'm like, "Mm, there's some overlap though. They do overlap, but I also see where he's coming from in the sense of like, I feel very similar to a lot of like influencer friends where it's like, I'm friendly with you. I know you, but I don't know you like a person that I know in real life. There's just no fucking way. I mean, honestly, I think we've talked about that before is that like, cause we've said even our influencer friendship took place very much offline. Like we had been in a few videos together for Clever, but like you'd come and film something at Clever, but then we'd hang out at my apartment and be like drinking and hanging out for like, the next 12 hours. He very much is trying to paint it like they would film collabs and that's like where the friendship ended. And she argues that that's absolutely not true and that they had plenty of times that they were hanging out off camera. I don't know what it's like to be friends with Tana Mojo. I've only met her like twice ever. I don't know what it's like to be friends with her, but I do have to assume just judging by everything I know about her content and that I've seen of her online, I feel like she would be a difficult person to be friends with, not because of like her personality, but because she seems to be very like aloof and like on the go with like a million things and doing this and doing that. And I don't, I I can't do that. Like I can't be friends with people like that because it stresses me out and I need to like be chill. And hey, can we just like relax for two seconds and not think about doing a a trillion things? Like I feel like she'll be a difficult person in that aspect to be friends with. So I could see why Bryce Hall would maybe not assume that they're like friends, friends. She references in Jeff's podcast, like, hey, we've spoken on the phone. Like you've told me your deepest, darkest secrets and I've told you mine. And I don't doubt that. Like I'm not saying that they didn't and he doesn't deny that. But I am saying like, I could see why he might have thought that. Like where he's just like, well, we're not like fucking best friends. You know what I mean? I think here what where my mind goes is I get what he's saying too, is that you do have people that you are more publicly facing friends with because of your collabs and doing stuff on camera together. But the way he has used that to then just shit on her and then oh, excuse no, no. shitting on her is like, mm. Yeah, 100%. That was like my 
caveat to that is like, I understand where you were coming from, but you are such a dick in your like delivery. And also you do like flat out lie when you're like saying like, oh no, she just like forces me to make videos. If you want to say like, hey, we're friends, like we're friendly, but definitely like Tana's not going to be someone that I call at night if I like get in a car accident. It'd be one thing even if he framed it like we use each other for clout, but he made it then, he like has gone down this road of like she's using him 100%. Yeah. And it's like, you literally, this only started because you said that you were sleeping with her for clout. The strangest thing about his argument is that he just basically about a thousand times apologizes for being so aggressive in the way he delivered it. That's but like then I, I get, like I just said, he then just rephrases it in a equally as aggressive way. Yeah, he basically says the same thing and he's like, I apologize if I came off aggressive, but basically exactly what I said. Yes, literally, or maybe even worse now. Bryce, do we have you on the line here? Are you here? Welcome to the show. Thanks for joining us. We have Tana here. You're a uh, friend. No, we're not friends, You're... apparently. Do you, did you mean that? I would say, um, there's a difference between like friends and like co-workers. I agree with that, Bryce, but what about like a poker night? What about like Vegas? What about like a uh, Josie, Josh friendship night? Yeah, what I heard about you a, guys went to a pumpkin what patch about together. A Santa Monica a haunted house. bungalow. What about- but These, these are, these again, said, are like co content. Content things. When you and I were gambling Big in con. Vegas last, were we we weren't filming, we were just shooting the shit. You were telling that's, me about that's your a, hookups. That's a setting where we're both where we're both drinking and, and a lot of people are, are So like the second drinking. you get say, a sip of like, alcohol, we're not friends. At certain points, like yeah, we would get along, but I, I wouldn't consider you a friend. I didn't, I, it came across like way more aggressive than it was, like than it, like I meant to be. Is it because you guys it hooked up? Because like, I see Dave, that when, when I've hooked up with people in the past, it gets a little, a little no. awkward and it's like, oh, that's like a girl that I, I fooled around with. Let I was me. explaining to Jeff that that hookup instance was so long ago and I felt like after that, after we squashed our beef, we developed a friendship. I was honestly hurt to see you say that you felt like we were never friends. I'm sorry if that hurt your feelings. Thanks, you felt like you really meant that, Bryce. He gives us very much nothing. <laughs> like, he's just very like, sorry if you feel that. And there's a difference between friends and other friends. I'm like, Bryce, what are you talking about? Like, he just, he doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Poor thing. I don't know. What people are speculating is that she apparently went on a podcast after he said the whole, I slept with her, even though I'm not attracted uh -huh. to her and just to use her for clout. After that, at some point, she went on a podcast and basically said that she didn't support him in his like newest fight. I guess he did another fight where he was boxing. Oh, she was not God for him now. <laughs> she was not Team Bryce on God at all. But she said that she wasn't because of that original, like him saying that and they like she didn't, she didn't want to go or whatever. The thing about you know? Bryce Hall being like, yeah, I fucked Tana. I he said, tweeted today was like, he has a, he has like a new fight and he was like tweeting, I want Tana to say Team Bryce on God to like promote it. I need her to have it. I was like, didn't you just say you fucked me for clout on a podcast three days ago? This and people are speculating that this is him like kind of like trying to get back at her for that. To which I say, you started it. Yeah, I was gonna say, she would have still been on God had, she, had you not like tried to flip It's the... not on God, Lily. It's Team Bryce on God. It does, it's not the same thing as being on God. On God for him, which is Team Bryce. <laughs> no, <laughs> Team Bryce on God. What the paparazzi? No, I just think that like, honestly, people like Bryce, mm, I don't know, I wouldn't get too close to someone like him. It's like, yeah, sure, maybe he has his redemption arc and maybe he's not a complete dick like he used to like play it off that he was, but he's not 100% not a dick. No, I think I it seems to me that. like he's just not as upfront about it now. Right, he's like hiding it a little bit better. The fact that he does this repetitively for Tana to basically come across on TikTok and that's like the first time she's finding out about it. Like I was scrolling on my For You page. I saw him in this interview. I opened the comments, it was Tana saying, Bryce, what the fuck? Regardless of whether you wanna use the term friend or not, you guys had a personal relationship that was offline. Right. And out of re sheer respect, like yeah. don't shit on someone for no reason. And that's reason. the thing, it was like, you don't have to be best friends to not have be some respect horrible. for the person. Like, yeah. Oh, 100%. And although Tana, you know, recently has been up to some shenanigans, I, oh my God, we haven't even talked about her winery thing. 
Oh my God, the winery thing. That's true. She did a story time about a poor woman. She not only doxes this woman, but she literally says she wishes her death and that she wishes she could have killed. Like, I think at one point she even said she wishes she would have curb stomped her. Oh which my God. Clearly, she's not serious. But like, what? what? Who says Yeah, that? she was talking about a woman that did like a wine tour for her in Italy. In was France. It Italy? France. Yeah, I think she pieces of her for sure. Like we discussed in our last, you know, episode talking about her when she was very much like overdoing it, in my opinion, about that girl. She literally said die to that girl too. And I'm like, how about right, we eliminate that whole thing from your vocabulary? Why are you doing yeah, this? For sure. And I feel like that's her very much stuck in 2016 story times where even I would go way over the top and be like, this person's a psycho and like shit that is like, okay, well, let's just take a second. You know, let's take a second and step back. Yeah, just to sensationalize and like make it as entertaining as possible. It was definitely over the top and she's still doing it and we're in 2023 and we're like all older now like it's like girl don't and it feels like she had like realized that that stuff was not okay so that's why it's so like why are you doing that again like we I thought we were past this I know she's a conundrum I can never quite put my finger on what the hell she's thinking in a lot well, it's of because she has moments of like whether it's like her being a good person or not it's like you, that feel genuine even the arguments with Bryce right. it feels like her going to him being like wait what are you talking about like that feels like a real moment that she was actually like I thought we were friends or at least some version of friends where you weren't down to just like shit on me publicly on like on podcasts but then it's like oh it, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That was just something I've seen pretty much all over TikTok. Everyone's talking about the Bryce Hall and Tana Mojo feud. But Jeff was not a good mediator, I have to say. He was just, uh, I don't know what he was doing there. I'm gonna be honest. I know it's a podcast. I mean, I wouldn't but... have elected him to mediate any kind of argument, especially between the two of them. But you know, it is his show, I guess. But anyway, that's pretty much all we have for you today. Those were our three topics. I feel like this was such a heavy one. And I didn't I mean I knew it was gonna be when I was gathering all the foosy stuff I was like Jesus but you know hopefully there was enough lightheartedness to get you through this mess because this was this was intense and please if there are any lighthearted topics for our next episode that you would like to recommend please we share. would love them anyway guys that's all we have for you today we hope you enjoyed today's episode and we hope to be back on schedule and see you guys on Friday so hopefully that's what happens thank you for watching love you guys bye, bye.